Hello and welcome to the Bowtie Gardens. This is the end of December and we've got a couple more parts of our garden tour to get through and a lot of exciting stuff happening very soon. Um, so let's uh, get uh, get right along here with it. In fact, uh, you hopefully you can see the bees over here are active. This is very exciting. It's like 70 degrees out here right now. It's a beautiful day. The birds are singing, the sky is blue. Uh, leaves are still falling because this is Destin, Florida, the panhandle of Florida. And um, yeah, so things are happening around here, uh, even in the low season, uh, what some people might call the low season. <laughs> but we are trying to get ready, get the gardens ready for the next year and uh, making things happen. We did just have a freeze a week ago and it was a cold, 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 cold freeze. Uh, we reached 18 degrees. They were predicting 24 degrees and uh, we got down to 18, which is negative in Celsius. And we lost a lot of, uh, we lost a lot of stuff. We lost a lot of leaves. We haven't determined if we've lost any plants yet. That has yet to come, but we're gonna talk about the outer beds here. And we've got a few uh, apparent casualties, but I don't think they're gonna be casualties. I think, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm thinking positively that this is gonna work out right and uh, that we'll have a better year next year. So, um, yeah, it, it was cold. There's things that showing stress and, and it kind of makes me worried a little bit. But we're already seeing, you know, we're, we're a week out from it now and we're already seeing new growth and new life and new things happening. And uh, so I'm a little bit excited about showing you what's uh, going on here. Some of you know about the big tree and uh, it's it's uh, impending doom. I believe that may be as close as two days away. So I still have to remove. In fact, if I turn the camera a little bit here, you can see that the chain link fence over here is still up and it has to be coming down soon, which I have a friend coming over tomorrow. I hope that will help me get that out. But uh, I actually started removing the top post right along this section. You can see the top pipe is over is over here on the uh, further over to the left behind. Maybe you can't. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over here, you can see the top pipe is still there. But anyway, um, just got to get things one done one at a time. In fact, uh, the neighbor's dog Henderson. Um, you notice I've got the cage around this. I don't. If he wanders over here which he's a, he's a good dog. He, if, if I ever got a dog, it'd be a dog like Henderson, but uh, he's a sweet pup. And, uh, but I don't want him to get over here close to the bees. And which is why I've got the cage around the, 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 the cattle panel around the beehive over here to keep him safe. But uh, let's uh, get on with the tour here and see what we got. And uh, yeah, so, Obviously, parts of this garden are not doing too well. You can see here we have the uh, the melon patch, which is looking rather sparse, and that is by design. All of well, let's just get on with it, and I'll talk you through it here. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So one of the good things about the extreme cold, not only does it kill all the insects, which I know it killed a bunch of them, it also kills a lot of weeds. Dollar weed everywhere is looking just terrible, which is very exciting. Uh, unfortunately, like this is my fifth tie plant that I need to put out front and it got a little stressed and I'm leaving the tie plants a little longer just to get an idea of what uh how they're going to survive here so i don't know if this is going to die back and regrow they are pretty resilient plant this is the mint bag of mint that uh see this one is peppermint i believe and blueberries of course we talked about the scale and the end of the 
last part of this month's video. The leaves are getting scale, but the leaves are also falling off real easy, which means uh, we're getting ready to come out of dormancy. The bees, the bees are looking good. See if I can zoom in here. They are very active today. I'm standing about five feet away from it right now. And they're buzzing around. I think they're a little more concerned about getting their nectar. Though this bee off to my right uh, is making me a little nervous. So I'm going to move on. Yeah, like I was saying, the uh, melon patch, no different. But there's a lot of stuff shriveled and gone. And, uh, of course, this uh, lavender over here... Um, I have a love-hate relationship. I love lavender, but I can't seem to, haven't been able to get it growing. This thing is ready to be trimmed back though. So we're gonna, um, but let's just go ahead and do that right now. So I can't begin to tell you how excited I am to finally have lavender growing like this. And these stems are getting real woody. And uh, from what I understand, and I hope I do this right, from what I understand, you cut it down at the end of the season, when it starts browning out like this, oh, it's so beautiful. It feels so soft. It smells amazing, even though it's not new. But hoping this is right. If, uh, if it's not, then we will know. And I'll have this video to look back upon and cry over. But... Me and uh, lavender, I've had a tough time getting lavender growing, and uh, I'm just very excited to have a plant here. But it does require a little maintenance to grow a new uh, uh, new, you know, leaves and so forth next year. Uh, this did really good this year. Uh, it started off as a very small thing. A little seed start that I got at the, I think I got it at Lowe's. But there we go. All taken care of. I don't know what kind of lavender it is. It just says lavender. So... There we go. That is one more project taken care of, right? So while we're here, I wanted to show you the uh, elephant's ears. Of course, the freeze really got to them. These are just spongy. Ooh, spongy. Yucky spongy. So I'm gonna be moving this bench over a little ways but uh i would like to have the sugar cane growing right here i think and i want to get these some of these elephant ears moved over here closer to the bee box but that'll be another project the fig i, I, th I wanted to show you this this fig figs just want to grow look at the green on the tips of every one of these little nodes here on this fig tree it is so ready to start growing again which i'm a little worried about because we might still get some cold but you can see from this angle one stick growing up here and there's going to be an archway next to it here an archway over here there's going to be a few arches here so this whole area is going to look very different very soon this other fig tree is doing real good too very positive growth, ready to go. The blue tarp, of course, is where the loquats are going to go. The loquat hedge is going to go all the way down to where those bricks are. Those bricks need to be moved out. But we're going to do a loquat hedge in here. At least that's what I'm hoping. The blackberry arbor is starting to grow sign show signs of growth having to continue sticking these things these long things in various places it seems to have survived the cold pretty well 
at least the leaves haven't shriveled and died. There's a bunch of vines down here that really haven't taken off. I did plant a new one here. This one here is brand new and it came from across the garden. I've been trying to consolidate the blackberries into this arbor. The uh, pomegranates have completely lost their leaves. I don't see, oh, there's some leaves over there, but they all look dead. So the uh, goji berry seems to have survived the cold pretty well. In fact, let me come through here and see how this feels. Yeah, actually it feels pretty good. It feels a little soft, but I think it's gonna be fine. And the blueberries are here. And we're back around to the melon patch. So past the melon patch, past the lavender that we just trimmed. We have a couple, of, we have a little jalapeno bush here that's really looking bad. I'm kind of letting this go. I want to see what it does. This is because of the cold. And so is this. This is my first Fatale bushes. This is the bush that taught me to love Fatale. Another peppermint bag, which actually looks pretty good. I might have to come in here and trim that back a little bit. Get ready to pull that fence down. So this uh, Meyer lemon tree, yeah, it looks like it's had better days and in reality, with the way it looks right now, I might do good to come in here and do some trimming. I don't know. It is really looking rough. There's a lot of grass growing up in here. This one definitely needs caring for. But uh, one of the things I want to do is come in here with the ground cover in a 6 by 6 area and, and uh, prevent grass and weeds from growing up here. So this is all, all these leaves are from the uh, freeze looking really rough it's a Meyer lemon and past that is another pomegranate tree with no leaves right there and the privet hedge which may have its days numbered I don't know that's another thing that hadn't been decided there's guinea impatience in that little square pot right there this has potatoes in it in fact, there's uh, two vines coming out that are dead potato vines. I think if I leave them there, they're probably going to sprout again. Here's a dragon cayenne. It's come to the, the freeze. What will be the melon patch? And yep, there's the tree. You can see how it's leaning at about an 11 degree angle. It is really a little bit scary. A lot of cracking in the in the bark, staining. Looks kind of rough. Another Meyer lemon tree right here. There was a mint over here that I moved to the, one of the raised beds. I just moved the bag over to the raised beds because we got to get all these plants cleared out of here. This whole area is going to be taken over by a tree removal crew. Now, this uh, Satsuma orange tree actually looks a lot better than those lemon trees we saw. In fact, I've actually eaten a couple of oranges off this tree this year. It's actually pretty good. There's a lot of shriveling going in. I suspect there's a lot more here than I realize. Uh, a lot of these shrivelly little oranges need to get pulled off. Need to come in here. That one just rotted away to nothing. Eesh. Kind of what was happening last year, but this year I think we have a good excuse. I'm going to write that up to the cold also. You can see here some of these oranges. I don't know how about that one. It's kind of hard on that side. It's released here. It's green there. Hmm may try them I don't know so past the satsuma of course we have our onion patch and these things are looking good a bunch of lemons have dropped over here from this lemon tree 
but yeah these little bunches of onions have really grown up nicely and starting to expand and grow more all of these were just a few uh, sprouts to begin with and I broke these down to somewhere between one and three sprouts maybe four or five but certainly not this many this has definitely developed quite a bit there's some big ones in here but these were completely not affected by the cold the aloe on the oh my look at what we have here The aloe is very spongy feeling. There's a big old frog right there. Just sitting there enjoying the day. But yeah, these, these aloe look really bad. They're, they're just very spongy. Not, not doing good at all. In fact, they need to be cut back quite a bit. But interestingly enough, look at the green in the middle. These big leaves on the outside gave their best to preserve the plant in the middle and that's how almost all the aloe look they have these really nasty looking outer leaves with beautiful looking in fact let's see what happens here when I fold it pull this back yeah well, there's nothing there I do see green in there there's still a lot of energy down in the roots This Meyer lemon, these lemons are uh, spongy. <laughs> They're not very pretty. Uh, yeah, this thing it feels very spongy. Total cell cellular failure. And that one back there that was in full bloom before has no blooms and it has bit the dust. Rosemary down here, Rosemary survived. Rosemary's doing good. We uh, got some tomato cages in here. You'll see here in a minute what we did with the raised beds are in the next section, next video. But yeah, I'm afraid these orange, these uh, uh, lemons are all, they're like translucent almost and spongy. That's weird. That's just weird feeling. Is that mint down in that bag? No, it's not. I don't know what that is. There is mint down here. I don't know what, I can't remember what kind. Um, oh, this is another peppermint down here. In fact, it came from this pot. This is the original peppermint. It's gonna grow back. This peppermint's gonna grow back. In fact, looky here. Let me see if I can get down here. You kind of just rub it a little bit. Nope, that's not pit mint. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Look at there. Oh, yeah. Strong mint. That is peppermint. That will be coming back. Peppermint does not succumb to the cold very much. Not our cold, at least. Our cold, it'll be just fine. Look at all these little green shoots coming up in the middle of these aloe. Just ready to explode again. I don't know how old these things are, but they grow nicely. So here's the cool thing. You know, we had 18 degrees, and I'll be honest, I was worried about my loquats. But look at how healthy they look. In fact, just look at the, how green these things are. They're sturdy leaves. They're stiff, full of life. This one got a little burned here at the top, but look, there's already new growth down here in the first week. Even this little tiny one over here, it's still looking good. A couple of leaves took a hit, but look here, new growth already. How cool is that? That's exciting. The poinsettias, of course, took a hard hit, which is to be expected. These are poinsettias from last Christmas, so just over a year old, about 13 months old. And I like keeping them around because they make good trap plants for pests. So this jasmine, so okay, so the big tree we're taking down. I'm either gonna put 
like a jasmine growing over it or a wisteria. I'm not sure what I'm going to put over it yet. Trying to make up my mind. I do love how robust this still feels even despite the cold. It needs a lot of cleanup. There's a lot of um, vines that aren't producing any leaves in here so it definitely needs cleanup. But that might be a cool thing to grow over a 12 to 15 foot stump of a tree. I don't know. Anyone have any opinions? Some decorative grass back here. My calendula even looks pretty good down here. Not calendula. <laughs> My comfrey looks good down here. Ooh, look at the scale in here. I need to just trim this grass down, let it start over again. Little lumps on it, all over it. The uh, comfrey, yeah, the comfrey has a little bit of dead leaves under there. This stuff grows real fast, though. Great fertilizer. Great uh, food for the garden. All kinds of stuff just shooting up everywhere down in here. I don't know how that stuff survived. And we come around to the compost, and I have uh, some stuff I've cleaned out of the garden that needs to get chopped up. It's been sitting here uncovered, so it's a little soppy. I need to get it inside this thing and get it covered so it'll dry out. But we'll be emptying this compost for this, this coming year's garden. This is the compost we're building now. Leaves, kitchen scraps, grass cuttings. Uh, and so on and so forth. Still, mostly the wood chips from out the, by the road. And, uh, yeah. So, sun is kind of low for early in the day. Kind of hard getting used to winter like this. So I feel like this has kind of been a short video. <laughs> Probably 20 minutes, I don't know. It, there's not a lot to show, but the few things that we are showing, biggest thing right now is this tree. And I plan to do some recording during the taking down of that tree. Uh, it's, it's a big job and uh, we're not doing it ourselves. Uh, it's not a wise thing to do for me. Um, we will be having a crew come in. It's actually one of our neighbors across the street neighbor from my neighbor back here um, is going to come over and they're going to pull down the parts of the tree and me and my friend back here are going to uh, be doing cleanup and reclaiming firewood and uh, trying to get some good out of this tree. We are going to leave this tree up to a, somewhere up in this point up here and we're going to leave the stump. If we do need to re remove that the stump, you know, a 12, 15 foot stump, then that's something that I can do. So, uh, and I know one day that's going to have to happen, but we're going to enjoy it while we can and grow something up it, either the, the, um, jasmine or wisteria or something. Not sure what yet. We'll have to see. That's about the most exciting things coming up this week though. I am very excited to have seen the, uh, the loquat trees have survived in their little seedling states. That's kind of cool. So, yeah, um, I can't think of anything else right now. This tree is kind of weighing on me. Got a lot to do. In fact, it will be removing some of this, uh, these cross pieces here, the trellis, um, to get this tree down because it's kind of in the way. And uh, we'll, we don't want to break anything or hurt anybody for that matter and make it safe. So that fence coming down, part of this, uh, in fact, everything you can see here in the frame in this area back here is coming out, that post included. But uh, got a lot of work to do this week. And uh, so, oh, so yeah, next part is gonna be the uh, raised garden bed. And there's some pretty cool stuff happening in the raised garden bed. It's kind of exciting. Can't wait to show you that. Um, getting ready for the new year and upcoming crops. 
So we'll have to see what happens. Some of it's a wait and see game and some of it, there's no waiting, it's happening right now. But be sure and follow along. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of those video tours. And uh, if you have subscribed, I do appreciate it so very much and appreciate you coming back and watching the videos. Be sure to click the thumbs up. These are free things you can do to help the channel. And it really does help the channel immensely. And um, that thumbs up tells uh, YouTube that you thought this video was helpful, informational, entertaining, or maybe just plain stupid, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> one of those other videos, in fact, I think the last video you may have seen, I did eat a green scotch bonnet pepper that surprised me. Uh, little uh, confession time, me and uh, Mrs. Bowtie tried a scotch bonnet and a peri peri the other night, green ones, uh, from the salvaged pepper plants and um, it was not, uh, it didn't go well. I wish I'd gotten it on video, but uh, the peri peri is a hot, 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 hot pepper, even green. And you know, like the Scotch bonnet I ate on that last video that, that just came out, you know, I just ate a bit of the skin. I was like, hmm, that's nice. And then I bit into the seeds and the white part in the middle where the heat is. Oh, it heated me up, lit me up. Well, all we ate on that peri-peri was a little bit of the skin, the, the, the flesh of it, not the seed. That We took out all the seeds, didn't eat any of the seeds, any of the white stuff, and wasn't a happy uh, occasion. Mrs. Bowtie doesn't eat stuff as hot as I do, but she likes hot stuff, but not like I do. So it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the things we do. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get the third part of this month's video tour, garden tour, uh, recorded, and we'll go from there. So, hope y'all are going to have a happy new year, and have a blessed day.